You know what, Chris? I mean, like, I've I've never said it to you before, but sometimes you're and I think that's really just Are you being for real when I'm you being, say that? I'm being absolutely for real. Like dead ass, though. So. I didn't think Is this, like, camera shit, or, like, is this real life? I'm not going to say anything. I... I didn't I, think you were gonna bring it up. Like, I, we, I thought we, I, this isn't an improv scene. This is real. No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm. This is absolutely real, dude. Like you just asked me to be as real with you as possible, and that's. I just like I have to. Oh, so Mr. Nice Guy is. Uh, uh, you're you're real now. Is um, that? Yeah. I I. It's been a minute since I've seen you, and I feel like it would be actually dishonest of me to be to say anything else. Mm. <laughs> This is real, guys. This is this, real. This is ah. happening. It can't be that bad. Oh, 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 it can't be that bad. Sorry, I guess my dick is just so, so big. Oh, you're wearing these tiny women's shorts. No, the shorts, they're longer when I'm I'm. Can we talk about the, 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 the short movement and, like, workout attire? I feel like it keeps on getting shorter and shorter, and the shirts keep on getting longer and longer. Is this specific with me or specific no, like in, in the... No, in the gym. Like, I've, like I feel it's... like I don't go to the gym that mm -hmm. often, but whenever I, like... I when say, you walk by? Uh, yeah, when I, like, <laughs> just peep through the window. But when I, like, see people working out, I feel like short. This has nothing to do with I have no way. okay. This is my theory as to why shorts are getting higher at the gym is because men uh want to show off their big ass quads. Yes, they should if they have it flying. And then shirts are getting bigger because it's also to balance it out with humility. Like it's called the pump cover when you wear like a big shirt mm -hmm. so that you, halfway through your workout after you would get that initial pump. And I see I see big ass men at the gym do this, they remove their pump cover and, and they're uh, just jacked. They're like, surprise. Exactly. They don't want to come to the gym <laughs> revealing it already. I don't know what kind of gym you're going to. <laughs> I know. That's an interesting gym, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll try it out. I'm it's like it's always in the locker room, too. I don't know why they <laughs> corner me. Funny. But that's an interesting observation that you made. No, I'd be seeing your brother's post. That's why. No, oh, that's who you're referring to is my brother. <laughs> one Very frame, short one shorts. One frame of reference. Not an untrue frame of reference, but. It's almost. But your brother been, yeah, he been putting in work. It's motivating. Yeah, dude. It's a, uh, yeah. it's a, uh, seeing, seeing him work out is, it's also motivating, but also so upsetting because he got there so fast, I feel, and like was able to maintain it. And I'm working very hard to just you know be be where i'm at at this moment yeah. which is uh i'm happy with and you are have the most insane back i've ever seen on social mm -hmm. media it's it's lighting and oh is it the it's lighting just sunlight oh, it's the it. photographer mindset in yeah, you they, it's honestly that's if i if i if you were to do pull-ups and the light was hitting your back a certain way it looked probably the same mm -mm, i'll show you pull-ups later and <laughs> with the best lighting you'll be like ah there's something there but in the back of your mind there's you'll be a pack. like uh, yeah Yes. No, I've always been a fan of like Bruce Lee's physique, that's why. And his back is crazy. So Nuts. I think for the past twelve years, that's all I like pull ups and just like back row. You call it prison workouts. The last time I asked about your I still workout have your dumbbells routine. too. They're so yours. I, I gave I put them to use. I put them to use. No, I, I know you do I can tell that you yeah. put them to use. Yeah. Um <laughs> A few years ago, I gave you those dumbbells because you, you, I said I wasn't using them, and uh -huh. I'm glad that you still use them. Yeah, they, they're, they're nifty. Why don't, how come you don't want to use a gym membership? How come you just want to? I just I like my solitude. Mm, working out by yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I can feel myself like when I go to the gym, like kind of be a little bit more extra, which like hurt, can hurt me rather than help me because I like – I feel like I need to do more. And some, because there's people watching yeah. you? Yeah. Well, they're probably not watch me. but No, they're watching. Are they? Yeah. Is that what you're uh, thinking of, though? Is that people are watching you? No. Then why I, you? I, I literally, <laughs> like, when I go with my girlfriend, I'll go to, like, um, like a section of the gym where it's, like, private. So I'm not, like, the girls is anyone around. looking? All right. Uh -huh. Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still doing pull-ups at the gym. No, I, I'm, I'm just, like, tunnel vision. But maybe back in the day, I used to do that. You used to go to the gym a lot when you were a kid? Not even that. Like when you're a kid, when you're... I did go to the gym with my dad. My dad was trying to get me in the gym, like sophomore year, because I was whoa that young. Because my dad was like, he was like in it, um, but all the time. Yeah, your but... father's a scary man. 
Is he? Yeah. Whoa. When I've seen him at a distance, yeah, he's just a scary. That's so crazy. But also, I have this weird thing about myself when someone is uh, more, because he's kind of like to himself a little more. Yeah, but he would, that's, I feel like you're the, because everyone is like, he's like the, Keanu, we call him Keanu, like he's like the Keanu Reeves. Like, How so? We always like say he looks like Keanu Reeves. He's a bass player in so, a rock band. <laughs> basically. No, but he's very like friendly. Like he's the one, one of the most friendliest. You think I'm friendly and a nice guy. He's he's like top notch. Like, oh, like, you got it from him. He's like, he's like that. He is like Keanu. I love watching Keanu videos where he, like, you ever see him when he's like on the bus or something. Yeah, he's oh, the, the, the most humble person. Uh, Did you see that video of Keanu? Um he was uh he was at a signing like at a, yeah with that kid and there was a kid oh that God, was like man. hey I'm your biggest fan I yeah. love uh love so engaging so like let me take the time to like listen to you to like, look at you listen to you have you ever had an uh interaction with any celebrities where you felt like they were they felt their celebrity they felt their celebrity they felt how much of a celebrity they were mm. I don't think and they so. treated you like that before like I've ran into some like YouTubers. YouTubers who <laughs> treated who treated me like I was scum. Really? So yeah. Well, because they're YouTubers. Yeah. I mean, you would think that there would be like a level of like new money, new new fame. They don't oh, know what to do new, with it's no. new fame. They don't know what to do with YouTubers it yet. that got famous ten years ago, which is it's, not YouTube super is still a new. It's new fame. No, I definitely run into. I feel like YouTubers would have some uh, humility to them because even because though they understand it, like the hustle, and the, the hustle. Like, yeah, I don't know YouTuber. I haven't met a YouTuber. Or I've seen a YouTuber, but not like kind of to them. And you've met some like pretty pretty famous people though, right? Doing photography. You met Prince. Yeah, I, there I have a story. I'm gonna say it off mic because I don't want to say it on. But someone pretty like big. But it was supposed to happen on Sunday, but due to budgeting from someone who's really famous. Uh huh. We we it, it fell through because well, I'm we sorry. Were, I we you. were too expensive for this person. You were too expensive for this really yeah. famous person. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, I'll tell you later. Dang, how much are you charging? It, like honestly, it wasn't. It was only like fifteen hundred. Like it was, it was not it was, standard price. Yeah, it was for what? Yeah, I'll tell you later though. Whoa! It, I wish you had told us before. You say it. Okay, it was. Oh! What? Oh, but I okay. Please, bleep we'll just leave it, it there. Yeah, yeah. Course, I, we were talking to like manage, management, management, yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Does it ever blow your mind when you get these opportunities to meet some of these bigger names? It, does it blow your mind like, well, like I've known you growing up and I'm going to meet sure. you. I'm well, going to do this thing as, with you. As soon as I – I can't. I was going to sing a song. I was like, uh, I yeah, can't sing get... the song. But you know what song – the song that everyone mm -hmm. knows. You know what a song, a song. I mean, yeah. there's a lot. Just like on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. I get – I know already yeah, know you, from you know your shoulders who it is. But do you get nervous in front of – I haven't had an interaction. Like, if I were to take a portrait of someone famous, like, we did, like, the Plain White Tees and, like, Smashing Pumpkins. But these are bands that I, I don't know. You didn't listen to. Yeah, so it wasn't like a... Yeah. yeah. I was just like, oh, I literally don't know anything. So I just go into it like, no, it's like a normal thing. And they probably love that. Yeah, maybe. Could go, I could see it going either way. Yeah, I could see someone being like, Hey, you don't fucking know you me? You don't know me? Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I have to know every band from the 90s. I'm smashing pumpkins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a... Uh, I Because even... Is it more nerve-wracking to meet a band? Or is it more nerve-wracking to meet one person? I remember one time I saw... <laughs> I guess one person. I saw Raven Simone when I was like... Eight? And, and she was doing like these local like tours to promote music and one of those tours was like tour stops was on the military base and me and my sister like we we saw her walking down like an aisle it was like a um they call it the bx which is or the px or whatever mm -hmm. and we we caught her and we're like hi mrs simone before it was just raven it, she used to be raven simone yeah mm -hmm. and we're like hi mrs simone and she was a super like she was so sweet like what we was got she photos. doing at, when you were eight years old that so Raven was going no, not yet. No, this was before that so Raven. So she was like doing music, like 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 when the Cheetah Fubu, Girls Whoa. before Cheetah Girls too. This Whoa, was, she was a part of the Cheetah Girls, wasn't she? Yeah, she was Cheetah. Sweet. Her and then <laughs> and Adrian <laughs> and the other two were just girls. Girls, yeah. Was she nice when you met her? From what I remember, yeah, okay. she was cool. Like the photo that I re like vividly remember, like she was very like, friendly too. Just That's very good. like, oh my god. Oh, at least you guys have a photo. Yeah, I don't know where it's at. I'd though. be too afraid to ask for a photo. I don't want to, especially nowadays. I don't. I don't want to ask oh, yeah. for a selfie. Um, if I yeah, walk sure. up to you, I don't. 
this is how I want to play it. And you said it might piss them off. If I meet someone that's like really high up there and we, it's not, I, I'm going to, uh, subtly place myself near them. Let's say they're at a restaurant and they're at the bar and they're just trying to mind their own business. I'm going to go order a drink at the bar. I'm not going to act like they know, th I know them. Uh, but you know, if the bartender, like, uh, I don't know, ask me to pass something to uh, fucking Drake or some shit. I'll be like, yo, here you go, man. Are you, uh... <laughs> do you think Do you think celebrities or even people that you know <laughs> that you, you're trying not to know, do you think they, they can read that? Depends on how good you play it off. Like someone as Drake. Drake was a bad example. Drake knows that everyone knows Drake unless you're like an older person or like a foreign person that does not know pop culture. Right. But I feel like other ways, like who's someone that you think you could ignore without them knowing that you're ignoring them? I don't know. I, I, fake ignore. Yeah, fake ignore. I can fake ignore people that I like. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Like Keanu Reeves. If you I, went... I would not fake ignore. I'd literally turn around. <laughs> I just stare at him. I'd be like, hey, <laughs> thank you for freaking being a G. Like, I and feel he like he would love it. I feel like there's like, he's like, I'm okay. Three celebrities. If like, Whenever their time comes, where I will cry. And that's Jim Carrey, Keanu Reeves, and, and Christopher Nolan. Oh. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> there was a time when everybody was. I mean, yeah, that I was, was going to be the saddest day in comedy. The day Bill Cosby died, but that all changed. No, the saddest day in comedy is yeah. The, I mean, when he's Carlos basically Mencia he's dies. dead to us. <laughs> yeah, Jim Carrey, I hear, is so separated from reality now. Like he's a he's just a weird guy, but that's because he's also anti-Hollywood, right? Yeah. He's doing it for the art. Yeah. And I I think I can't be too anti-Hollywood. He was just in Sonic. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, you can't be super anti-Hollywood. He's anti the um culture of Hollywood, but still wants to be able to act for things that he I think I feel like he chooses his projects very well. Well, I think too. Oh, yeah. I think he's a grandfather now. So I think he did Sonic because he was like I could be completely wrong. Something like, like that for his kids or his yeah, grandkids like or something like, like this that. This is for them to have, which is like, it, it, which is dope. Because mm -hmm. then it's like, yeah, I'm gonna probably do this lame ass movie, but it's gonna, it's not for the masses per se. It's for my grandson or daughter. I don't know. I mean, that's why Pedro Pascal also did uh, The Last of Us because he didn't know the video game existed, but uh. when he received the phone call that he was gonna be ca that he had the opportunity to be casted for Joel, uh, I believe his nephew was in the car or something. And he was just like, yeah, I got this call to be uh, in this live action uh, 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 series of a video game. And they're just like, uh, what's it about? And he's like, it's about like, uh, like I don't know, zombies. Is that? And they're just like, is it The Last of Us? He was just like, yeah, it's that one. And they were like, you have to do it. And then he did it and he fucking killed it. That's wild. Did you watch that? I watched an episode mm. um, at my friend's house. Not, was not your jam? No, it was a really good. It was the one with, uh, what's his name? Nick Hofferman. Oh, you watched Oh, you watched the that one episode, episode that has nothing to do with yeah, like the rest honestly, of the series. Yeah, and I was like, holy, this love story is real. I mean, really I think good. that was it the was, best episode. It was like it's really good. one of the best. For sure the most like talked about episode. Especially with my expectations being low with any video game being uh, done in live action. Yeah. My expectations are so low that I'm just expecting disappointment, but yeah. that fucking blew me away. Yeah. Fucking loved it. It was so good. Well, hopefully they can do it again. I mean, it'll be hard to capture that lightning in a bottle for like, uh, I think I read that there was a Red Dead Redemption on the on the books. HBO was talking about making a shot of that. Mm -hmm. God of War. God of War. And for Amazon Prime. Maybe it was Assassin's Creed mm. that HBO or Prime was kind of, especially after Last of Us. Yeah. The, uh, really wanting to make a series out of, but it's so they hard. They made a live action Assassin's Creed, right? Yeah. With uh, Michael, Michael Fassbender. Fassbender. Yeah. And it sucked. And it was not good. I'm just like ready for more originals, like original movies, ideas, and like mm, yeah. especially emotional driven original like like ideas because I feel like that's it's it's hard to do nowadays because we're so dependent on nostalgia and like bringing so like, right like letting that be the thing that the audience falls on like oh damn oh, I mean we're seeing Michael Keaton's Batman and Harrison Ford's Indiana Jones this summer and those yeah. are gonna be the two biggest blockbusters and those but are both characters that are 40 years old I but with the flash like I am stoked about just like I know Ezra has been through like that crate you know him doing the crazy yeah. shit but even in like rewatching the flash like TV show and knowing like the relationship between Nora 
I'm just like so excited to watch his acting capabilities because I know he's good. He's a really good actor. He acted and normal for thousands of for most fun. of his life. He acted like a like a sane human being. <gasps> no, but I'm just excited to see like emotion again in the cinema, like especially with like big movies like that because like everything everywhere all at once have you Ugh. still haven't seen it or you've seen it I've seen it three times i yeah. own it and i want to watch it more yeah I but that's like love an original it. and like so emotionally Ugh. driven i cried so many times watching saying. it like, yeah but continue it, but like to see emotion in a you know mainstream movie that really does connect with the audience is what i'm what i'm missing and yeah. i feel like the flash does have great potential to like really Hit you, hit you in the guts. Because I love that storyline. Like I just love. He's one of your favorite comic book characters, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah. You were watching the entire CW. Yeah, I love show. it. It's so good. Is it like, low budget because it's CW? Yeah, but like mm. the uh, the first three seasons are is where it's at. It's just very like the acting's really good and just like the emotion. Like as far as just like. It's always it's like the root of its family and mm-hmm. your loved one, your girlfriend, your wife, your boyfriend, your you know, you know, just making like what 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 extent would you go for the ones that you love? And I guess like if every comic book kind of has that, yeah, mm-hmm. um, I mean it's relatable yeah. and it teaches you to be but a better the, person. Yeah, but the Flash deals with time, and that's something that I love of like the concept of time. Like, would you go back? To save one person that mm. you love, but if you go back for that one person, it will change every fucking thing in your life. I've That's, thought about that. Yeah, would you like? Yeah. Like, so if you go back, say Melissa, you may not be friends with Alejandro, or like <sighs> we were friends first. If you okay, you go save Alejandro, you may never meet Melissa. You yeah. know what I mean? But would I have knowledge that I had met Melissa yeah, when I because, go back in time? Yeah, because you're the one going back in time. So I can still actively go find Melissa But they're Lopez. turning into like, you know when you wake up and you're trying to remember a dream? Oh, fuck. And it's and like, it's fading away. Yeah. As, the more you think about it, the less you can remember it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Or like in Guardians of the Galaxy when Gamora... Yeah. Uh, but that's something that... Okay, so let's say you meet Melissa now. Obviously, mm-hmm. she's attracted to you. You Because you guys are uh, going to get married. It's what I mean. Yeah. But like, does that mean... If you go back in time, and obviously things are switched, that you can win her over again. No, like, that's gonna make me cry. No, but do you, you, no, cry. do you think like? I think I, there's a there's definitely a chance of me. I have to understand that she's probably not gonna be the same Melissa Lopez that I meet, and so all the nuances that I know of 2023 Melissa that she loves now might not be what she wants back then. It might come off as douchey. It might come off as creepy right. because she'll be like, how did you know that I liked that, sushi that's a, that that's much? That's the question I have for both of you guys. So this is for Karen, like, and this is like Melissa. And obviously we may not be able to air this, but mm-hmm. what would you say to them in the past to let them know that, like, hey, we like, you know, that one detail that no one else would know, but be like, I know we're meant to be because... All right, there has to be scenarios. There has to be scenarios because I can't just like, walk into a uh, a boba shop and Melissa's there, and I walk up to her uh, just cold and be say and I'm say, "I'm from the future, and I'm from the future, be, and we're together." And we're, we're, I for sure can't say that. That's the great. <laughs> she's gonna be like, "Who the fuck are you?" Okay, okay. Then what would you do? Like, I'm from the past. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> but she's gonna think I'm crazy still. <laughs> What is the scenario just like out in public type thing? Yeah. Okay, so we're not working at Six Flags together. It's a completely different and scenario. And let's say you have a time. You, you only have five minutes. I only have five minutes. I would. <laughs> and also you're wearing uh, you're wearing a pink jumpsuit. <laughs> this is what I do. And it's probably stupid. But since I'm on the spot and I can't and I'm on a podcast right now and I can't think I can't sit down and think about it. I would sit down uh, at the table at this boba shop right next to her. Try to uh, put on AirPods, but don't connect them to my phone, right? Act like it was an issue. And I'm going to try to play a song that I know she loves and that I know that she especially loved back then uh, that we didn't discover together. Something like put my head on, uh, put my head on your shoulders uh-huh. or put your head on my shoulders um, by Paul Anka. I would play that um, and... Uh, it wouldn't be connected, and I'd be like, "Oh fuck, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." Like that was really. Li- I try to be silly about it, but I know that she would l- love it and know it, and hopefully she'd be like, "You love oldies too," type thing. 
<laughs> Fuck you guys! I know you no, guys no, are not no, liking no, this. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. I, I, mean this, yeah. I was like, damn, I was feeling the feels for sure. Mm. But I just envisioned. <laughs> that I could just see her being like, "Can you turn that down, please?" <laughs> hey. Then, Five minutes are up, and you're just like, all right, bye. And then you start to like dissolve. That was a great I'm not going to play the entire song. <laughs> that was and a great interaction. Three <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, man. I, don't, I mean, for me, I don't know. I'd have to go back to like the first grade for when me and Karen didn't know each other. Because I've known her since the second though. grade. So, any, yeah, that, that's I, true. If I went yeah. back in time, she'd be like, oh, hey, Alex, a long time no see. It'd be exactly how our relationship started. Okay, let's switch it then. Let's do, do some Back to the Future stuff. No, I'm hitting on Melissa? No, oh. let's say you, you're going <laughs> I'm back. I'm hitting on Karen? You're going back to tell something to your past self, like your younger self. How would you convince them that, yo, I'm like, I'm you? Like, Show like, my dick. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> this is your dick. <laughs> Dude, Recognize it? You'd go to jail. You would go to jail if this is in public. No, I wouldn't send You would myself find yourself at elementary school. I'd be like, I recognize that dick. I know that dick. That's my dick. That's... That man must be me. We have the same dick. Oh, How man. old? Wait, this is first grade Alex. I don't know. He didn't. First grade didn't Alex s- penis looks <laughs> like now Alex's penis. I ain't saying yeah, exactly the same. This. I know that penis. I had a huge cock in the first grade, but it just stayed the same. It was actually handicap. It was. It was I had a wheelchair. Travel. Yeah. Oh, it was actually a wheelbarrow <laughs> to carry it around. Uh, I mean, what would you say to Karen back in the first grade? Bless you. I don't know. I thought. I, I also, mean, she's a child. We yeah, should have him talking to a child. Not, not first. Like before you guys started a date. Yeah. Like. Um. I don't know. I mean. I I think uh, my, my position wouldn't be to talk to them. My position would I would want to if I had that opportunity to go back, I would just want to sit and watch and just kind of like see. Or if I, <laughs> like for, for I was thinking like when Christian was talking about him like meeting Melissa, she doesn't know him. Uh, I wouldn't mind going back, but uh, if Karen didn't know me, going back in time and meeting Karen as a stranger and seeing that, just having that genuine, real interaction as strangers just to see what it would be like for those five minutes. And then I'm sent back to the future. Then I can know if it was really like meant to be. If we would have met as strangers, you know, we would have had that good connection. It's not all based on the past and something like that. I I would be interested in seeing it that way as opposed to going in and be like, we're meant to be. I'll see you in five years. Bye. You know what I mean? That would ruin things. Or or you go the route of finding your old self and getting them to be like, hey, sit with her. Mm -hmm. Have a coffee with her. I got to go. Peace. I would go up to my old self and I'd be like, lose weight sooner. <laughs> lose weight sooner. It's not all about personality, Christian, especially not in high school. Damn, you want to hug girls in high school? Lose weight sooner. Jeez. I know. That's actually, that's I would real cry. Shit, that right there, that I mean, feeling. that's just my own insecurities and my, sorry guys, dicks riding up my shirt shorts again. <laughs> you wear shorts weird, bro. <laughs> it's just the, these chairs just keep bringing it back. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, dude. I like what you said about going back to the moment where you and your significant other were interacting prior to dating yeah. and just watching. Just witnessing it. Like, That's I would weird. love to go to Six Flags where Melissa and I met, especially since I did not know how to talk to women and uh, <laughs> she was the one that hit on me first. I want to look at myself and be like, how was I receiving just all of this? Watch your flop sweat. When, when you say that, when you, when you, say you, don't, you didn't know how to talk to women. In that way. Oh, in that way, okay. I mean, so it's, it's not more like, so like just. You could only speak to them in uh, uh, Dothraki, right? So you could like just like scream at them. Because <laughs> I was hoping they would all love Game of Thrones. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, so I like, didn't wow, know how early. to flirt, um, and uh, it. I knew how to make someone laugh. I knew how to make uh, a girl laugh, but I wouldn't clock that in as flirting. I would clock that in as just like, I can get your attention. Because I have enough social awareness to know that if you're smiling, if your body's face toward me and we are engaged in conversation, then something's working. It's not necessarily flirting. I'm not winking at you. I'm not saying some pseudo. It's when they play with their hair, you know they're flirting. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't clock that in until way later. So Or they're just scratching because they're irritated. They're like, who's this, who's this person trying We're to doing do one of these? <laughs> I, mean, I, I think she really likes me, guys. <laughs> I've definitely seen uh, friends of mine that don't have good uh, social skills try to talk to women. And like how much these girls just are not interested. They're not facing them at all. And uh, PP time? Yep, yep. You, you called it. Yep. You know me. I know you very well. I could do it here, but you got mad last time. Uh, I, would be, I would make you pay me money. Dang. But uh, yeah, it's I don't know. Did you did you know like how to talk to women at an early age? Um, 
pro I didn't I, I think at an early age I didn't know how to really talk to anyone like I, I think I was very shy um I think as I got older and like the past 10 years I that's when I started to feel more comfortable uh, maybe even sooner I don't know do you think it's your creativity like when you got into photography uh, I think as of lately that's hit a lot more like I really need to be more um not need I guess need but also want like I want to have more dialogue and uh, conversations with people mm -hmm. and really be present because when I'm shooting like when I'm photographing people uh -huh. um like you you're messing with people from all walks of life so people who uh, are shy or people who are very outgoing and then I just try I like to say I try to match energy but then when someone is very shy that's when I have to up up the... See, that's a skill because I've always thought about the amount of skill it takes to be a photographer that does a lot of portrait photography and that like shoots a lot of like wedding photography. You're you're interacting with these people that are essentially strangers with you and you're trying to make them comfortable not only with themselves but in front of a camera in this new place right. and something in this uh, situation that they're not familiar with. Well, that's something that like I've seen memes about it uh, and it's very true. It's like when you're uh... – when you're a videographer, you can kind of lean on the, or ride the coattails of the photographer. Mm -hmm. But when you're a first shooter, for, uh, like photographing, you become like the wedding planner, essentially the the therapist. You're trying to calm oh. them down, and you're trying to be a friend. Whoa. You're trying to be like wear all kinds of hats. I never thought and about that. And it becomes that. very like draining. Like, like after a shoot, like I'll I'll be like, literally like I don't want to, it like. I don't want to talk to anyone. Not because like I'm mad. It's just like I'm literally a socially drained. Yeah, for sure. So, um, but then it's rewarding too because you you know you, when you, when you are vocal, you're able to get the shots that you want. You're able to um, leave an impression on people. Like you want to if you know there's a bridal party, so chop it up with the people in the bridal party because they're going to get married one day too, and mm -hmm. you want to leave that impact and kind of you. You know, you want to be genuine too. You want to have a genuine interactions, and if you feel like someone doesn't want to talk, that's when you're like, okay, you don't have to talk. I don't, yeah, we're like we're good. We don't have to. But there's a lot of pressure because you yeah. said, yeah, the videographer has gets to ride the coattails of the photographer. Yeah, the photographer has to capture specific moments, so you have to make sure when you do press the that that button, that it's that moment that you want to capture. As right. opposed, to the videographer could just kind of passively uh, record yeah. and capture those moments as they happen. Right. And, and you have to get them like in the mood for you got to make people feel themselves. It's the whole stereotype yeah. of what you see in movies. Uh, just like, uh, uh, like, yeah, you give me fears. Give me like, it's the, the, stere oh, yeah. the stereotypical right. photographer for like models, right? Give me fears. So oh, I'm loving it, baby. I'm loving yeah. it. Right. But there's some truth of getting, not that you say that to, to wedding couples and whatnot. Does it just for the groom. <laughs> but that's the thing with like wedding photography. It's like, it's almost like an obligation. Like the, the, sometimes you deal with clients who are like, we have to have a photographer just to capture the day. So they're not there. Their mindset isn't really like, oh, we're going to have a creative photographer on site who's going to make us. They're just like, we need someone to document the day. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you, like if I get a one-on-one -on -one portrait with someone, they are want to get their photos taken for a reason. Yeah. Um, so there's a, there is this like energy shift where – a wedding, it's like sometimes it feels like we're just there because they just need someone to capture certain moments so they can send the photos out to family who can make it. Whereas with a like a portrait session, it's like, oh, yo, you want photos for like, I'm talking like outside of headshots yeah. and like a LinkedIn photo. Like some like I like to do more like just capture Look, the I, essence. Yeah, of have someone. a book. I have a yeah. book Ex of photos. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so. That's why I lean more towards like portrait or photography, even though I love wedding photography, um, just to have like that one on one and just uh, one of my favorite wedding photogra uh, photographers, um, Andy Leibovitz says like, um, it's not my job as a photographer to like make you feel comfortable. And mm -hmm. you can take that two ways like, oh, that's very douchey or like that kind of makes sense because I want to capture you and I can't magically make you feel relaxed and anxious free it's yeah. like we just here to capture your essence and um that reads on camera and 
it is what it is. And wow. I think I love that aspect because it's just very authentic. And in the age that, you know, we've talked about before, that social media is very like showy, showy. And I think the beauty in the times right now is I think we're becoming very self-aware of that. So we're seeking more authenticity. We're mm -hmm. seeking enjoyment of doing just what we love to do again, rather than it like, we got to do a podcast because we're trying to get famous. No, yeah. let's just, we doing it because we love it. And that's the realm that I'm at right now too. Sure. It's like, I love photography. You're loving the art. You're yeah, loving I'm loving the, the art, art again. I had to fall in love with it again. When we were talking to you about portrait photography and wedding photography, it felt last year and maybe uh -huh. in the years prior to that, it felt like you were viewing it as more of a job and it was oh, feeling yeah. like work and you were falling out of love with it it was right. very transactional yeah for sure and, and then that, that a lot of it goes out to shout out just my homie justin uh who's a great photographer he was like he really went when he went full-time in photography he was like non-stop hustling and i saw that and you know when you're around young energy like people who are just freshly new to something and they're just hungry and then you're that old head who's like yo they, they we'll don't see. Get, we'll mm -hmm. see how long they last. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you're thinking. <laughs> but surprisingly, it just reignited something in me where I'm like, fuck, like, I have to view it a different way in order to be successful. Like, I have to, I have to find what I love about it rather than like, I have to have a client that makes me love it. No, it's like, I want to show the client that. I love what I do. Therefore, they'll be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like what you guys do. Because there's like, work on your end uh, outside of the objective and practical work of make, of shooting good photos. There's work internally right. of like trying to find the love in it. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So like, like imagine if you, you guys hit me up to do this podcast. Imagine you guys hosting a podcast and you're like, yeah, so what do you do? And then, like, it makes me feel like, oh, shit, like, I don't have to be here. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, but the fact that you guys give, you know, all that you got makes me want to, like, obviously, it's a, you you guys, I'm sure, talk to people who are, like, it's kind of hard to, like, like Dude, I'm, tr I'm trying. We've like, taken pride on, because I think both Alejandro and I understand, and even sometimes forget that the people that sit in that chair across from us, a guest, that doesn't podcast all the time or has never been on a podcast, they get nervous, they get scared. Um, they're nervous that they're not gonna bring us good content. And we take pride in not being that podcast that will promote those feelings of fear and uh, uh, discomfort. So we've heard so many times and we, take, we are so flattered when people say, and it's on multiple occasions, from people that have been on hella podcasts, they say, this was the most fun podcast that I've ever been on and I can't wait to be back. At what point, though, like, kind of like what Annie Leibovitz says, like, at what point are you able to recognize, like, all right, I can't do any more as far as, like, because you guys can read the, the yeah. guess, obviously. At what point are you able to be like, all right. And, like, what do you do when you get to that point where you're like. I keep being me. I'm going to feel uh -huh. there's a balance of bringing your own energy. There's a difference between bringing your energy and actively trying to change the energy sure. yeah. because then it then the listeners are going to feel feel that's inorganic we kind of just got to ride the wave but also we can't let that let's say the guest's energy is a negative energy or it's very low i can't also negatively let that affect me it'll mm. influence my energy for sure sure but i mean well and i think we're at a point too with our podcast where we're not we're we we know what we're doing Right I, on this side of it, Thanks. and um, I'm not so worried about what is gonna come from, you know, this side of the room. Right, like how Christian said, you know, when we when we have other people in the chair, um, I'm not super worried about like how we're gonna go because we we can adapt and we can you know we've been able to mold ourselves to what what we need to do, um, but the uncomfortable if the uncomfortableness doesn't leave the guest, that's always tough because there's nothing you can really do yeah. about it. I mean. We had a guest not too long ago, and it, it felt okay in the you know in the recording session. But I think even later on, we were both were like, oh, I mean, I couldn't tell if it was like nerves or maybe you know a little too much to drink, a little too much to smoke before we go. And it's like it was probably all of it. And then the fact that you know we do this all the time, we do this in every which way you can think of. You know, there's not really a curveball that we haven't really experienced. You know, so. Yeah. However, that being said, 
Um, even though, for the most part, yeah, we've done this a lot and we know what we're doing, what we're getting into every single time we hit record. I'm always still nervous and still scared of me being a good host and yeah. me uh, being on or in the pocket. Yeah. And it feels good when we're on or in the pocket. But since we've been on and in the pocket so often, it's almost easier to recognize when I'm not, not. on mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. out of the pocket. Right. It's it's ve- yeah, it's very similar. Like when I'm waiting for a shoot or like uh, a client, I'm like in my head. I'm like, how's this going to go? And then you're in it. And then. You're like taking photos, and for people that don't know, sometimes mm-hmm. you take a bad photo, but you say it's a good photo still, just to kind of like amp up, you know, the energy, you mm-hmm. know, like to bring to the keep com- it going. Yeah, just, to be, yeah. And then, but sometimes you could just feel it, like, oh shit, like I'm trying, like, and I'm, I'm, it's not coming out how I how know. they wanted it. And then for me, that's when it goes into like the edit. That's why I'm like, okay, I'm not, I, I wasn't feeling it on the shoot, but maybe I can edit something. Yeah. And then I get an edit and I'm able to like do something with it. And um, yeah. And There's, sometimes it turns into like one of the most beautiful shots. It, it could, but most of the time, like personally, I think now is like, I, when, when I take a photo, I know like this is it. Like this what is going wow. to be a good one. Wow. This is going to be a bad one. Um, because like you, you guys are saying, you you just know. And that, I think that's when it's like that professionalism like yeah. kicks in. It's like you just know. Like it's a, it's a feeling. Like. Sometimes, even though we do just know, yes, almost like, uh, like 100% of the time, if the recording session feels good, then that episode is going to be a fucking killer episode. Mm. Yeah. But there's still room for surprise because mm. there are some episodes where I felt the energy was a little off in the room or like there were some pauses. And then I go and edit it and I'm like, oh, fuck, this was really, yeah, you find that, it. That really the, funny. Yeah, yeah, the flow yeah, of the episode. It. The flow of the episode, it's uh, just kind of like uh, those pauses that I felt were awkward in the moment turn into comedic pauses uh-huh. like the perfect time pregnant pauses that you look for in comedy when no one knows what to say even though like it when you're actively recording five seconds of silence uh or three seconds of silence might feel like forever but three seconds of silence on youtube and when you're switching angles looks like the funniest fucking reaction That's it's so it's cool. or, it's I don't know. Art is surprising. That's the best part, especially when it's coming from yourself. Because you think you know, like, because you're in the moment. And then, like you said, you go in the edit and you're like, holy, sh-. like, I have something right here. Mm-hmm. It, I think that's one of my favorite parts. It's like, um, when, even with a video or photo, when I'm like editing, I'll see something and I'm like, damn. Like, even the way, like, the eye is focused on, you know, on the hand or the, or, or how they're making eye contact with each other. Like, mm-hmm. I feel something, therefore I know most likely someone else is going to feel something. That's where it's like. Dude, yeah. when you took um, shots of me and Melissa last year, mm-hmm. uh, what we were just talking about before recording, uh, when you took those shots, those, first of all, those shots are beautiful. I use them for everything. It's my, my Apple ID photo. <laughs> <laughs> Apple it's my ID. LinkedIn, uh, my LinkedIn headshot. I just, uh, I just added a photo to my IMDB for the single credit that I have on there. Let's go. Um, and it's all your photos, but even thinking beyond just the, uh, objective quality of the shots, the experience that you provided also, I mean, it does help that we're good friends, but uh-huh. the experience you provided in the studio, it was so fun, dude. Was so it? I feel pre- like I, I feel pressure, especially I feel more pressure when it's someone I know sometimes. Really? Well, of course. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know why. Yeah. But like, because like, because a stranger, I, you could do whatever yeah, you want. And I also like, I know friends will keep it 100 too. So I know like if they like it, they like it. And if they don't like it, they'll let you know that they don't like yeah. it, which is obviously what I want. I want it. I want it to be uh, collaborative. Real. Yeah, exactly. Dude, it was great, man, because you were just slapping music. The acoustics in uh, that studio were so nice. The backdrop and, like, watching you in your element made me so excited. Melissa and I were just dancing, gigging. I was singing, and uh, it was so fun. I think now, though, like, especially, like, I really want to shoot with you guys again. I think now it would be an even grander experience i don't know what the <laughs> fuck to say but like i just like uh like fireworks or? yeah but i just like <laughs> like i was talking to justin about it like i feel like now i smoke just smoke wa- machine i'm sorry i just uh, continue, continue fireballs but i want to like 
what I see in LA, you know, when I see like every time I walk past a Gap thing or an Old Navy ad, I'm like, I can do that. And I want to bring that. I want to bring that quality to people that I know mm -hmm. and who like deserve it. And like the hidden gems. And I've, I've always said it like um, some and this is a topic that we've discussed, too. Sometimes you sometimes you just get the, the end of the stick, you know, mm -hmm. like you can have everything, the talent, the look the performance skills but then just not get it yeah and that's okay that's something that I, I you know i'm having to learn to accept but it just sucks what do you want like what do you want you want those big brand deals i want comfort like i want to be comfort like l i want to do what i love and be comfortable yeah i don't necessarily need a big brand deal you know you got it though i mean you must oh, i know i have and that's the thing that I've been, I'm working on is the comment. Like, I know I have what it takes. Mm -hmm. I just know that the network aspect needs to be worked on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been working on this year. It's just like, I have been having it. I talk to Chris all, all about it all the time. I'm like, bro, I, I would beat myself up all the time. I would belittle my own business yeah. to like, you Make know, protect myself. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I know that I, I look at Chris, I'm like, bro, you fucking have it. I fucking have it. Mm -hmm. Like, the people that I've surrounded myself with, have the juice yeah and it's just and that's half the battle yeah. yeah yeah and now it's just that one that 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 luck dude we were just talking about it uh before we hit record you said all it takes and you said, said about this podcast you're asking us about like how are the numbers looking but also don't worry about the numbers yeah. are you enjoying it yeah yes we're fucking enjoying it um but all it takes is that one moment, whatever that moment is, right. the, the one like uh, like Austin Scott said, the one Seth Rogen to it's be facts. like, hey, these two dudes are funny. Mm -hmm. Or this other podcaster that's bigger to be like, these two dudes are funny, come on my podcast. And then someone seeing us on yeah. that podcast and another and saying, come on my podcast. Yeah. And then you do, it's all, it's, it's one moment that can easily snowball into bigger moments. Yeah. And that's what you have to keep chasing. But that's the thing. Too. I was just about to say that chase is draining. I'm going to be real. Like, yeah, I, yeah. Part. Yeah, yeah, sure. I've been on that like decline as far as energy. Like I'm tired, but there's something in me. That's always like, maybe, you know, that the whole, the crystals right there. And the guy's like just digging for it. And he's like, mm, right. He's so close. so close, but he doesn't know it. So, um, mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about, but, um, we have to find ways to reinvigorate your hope. Yeah. To reinvigorate your love, um, for me, I've ex I, I experienced burnout a lot. Yeah. The this 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 podcast with the the editing and like, uh, especially how much I love and care for it. Like the love alone just is draining. But finding ways to reinvigorate that, like when making a clip that I genuinely think is fucking funny, or posting an episode that I genuinely mm -hmm. think is fucking funny, or it takes that one person, not even numbers, that one person to be like, "Yo, listen to the episode." So funny, I, yeah. I pissed myself. Yeah. Some well, shit like that. Uh, just like, uh, first of all, clean up. Uh, you goddamn Other degenerate. problems. Yeah. <laughs> um, all it takes is that. Right. And then I'm back in it. Yeah, that's that's honestly it for me too. Like, I, like I'm so proud that I didn't have to do like, I'm going to eat hella, hella jalapenos and freaking <laughs> eat the spiciest food for you to fucking start following me. And like... I just did what I love. And well, that's I, what your page is missing, though. Honestly, just maybe, so you maybe, know. The Mr. No, Beast that's the type thing shit. That's a fucking crazy, though. It's yeah, like, man. That's what, we, that's what we're competing do, with. Yeah. We're competing yeah. with people who are eating jalapeno peppers, the spiciest chip. Yeah. And you're take, it takes hours for you to edit a fucking um, teaser. Dude, there's you know something I mean? so weirdly, like... Uh, belittling about me having posted uh, a reaction to Silk Sonic's Leave the Door Open two years ago or so, that hitting like 50k views in the mm. month, and then this <laughs> just like, and that took me like, one that hour just like... to edit. It's just me like <laughs> genuinely reacting, be like, I didn't even talk during the reaction. I was just like, man, yeah, that shit was dope. Expected nothing less from Bruno and Anderson. Uh -huh. Also, subscribe to my podcast. The the uh, the transition from the reaction video reactions to uh, the podcast non-existent, dude. It's crazy. But, but you, I, it, it is a smart way though to like bring like, some eyes to yeah, the page. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, not even to the page, but to you. To me, yeah. yeah. I, but I don't want to be reaction guy. <laughs> well, that's but you're not. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. You see, you you both are talented people. That's what you guys are. 
Thanks, I'm, pr- I'm proud of y'all, man. <laughs> to go off on that, though, what I was afraid for <laughs> a little bit. over there? Yeah, I just can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude, and vice versa. We're proud of you. Thank you, guys. Uh, what was scaring me for a little bit, though, I mean, especially... <laughs> no, no, nothing's scaring me about you guys or anything. Is um, uh, in the past, like, month or two... Instagram has been shoving in my face all these AI tools specifically oh, for shit. podcasting, right? And yeah, I'm just like, okay, that's making uh, my job as an editor kind of obsolete, right? And so I Is finally, it? I finally did it. Oh, I, did you? I t- there's a there's a, a, a website where you can take a YouTube link of your podcast and you put it in there, and it makes eleven clips. 11 like Instagram clips for you. Wow. And I was like, there's no fucking way this is going to be better than the clips that I made. And I I did it after like an, uh, 30 minutes of it trying to figure the YouTube link out. It produced like 11 clips with titles and it describing why this would be a good clip, right? It'd be like, uh, this has a very capturing opening. Uh, you guys talk about uh, this, which could be relatable to the audience, so on and so forth. But then I watched the clips and... Overall, very, very, very impressed that AI can fucking do this. Yeah. But also found some uh, solitude and comfort knowing that my clips were better. Yeah. Because it has the human eye to edit oh, yeah. the very fine details. Well, I mean, and wouldn't the ideal use of this software be to have it do something and then you go back and kind of polish it? Either tweak and polish or use yep. that as the skeleton for. I mean, because it's not like they had bad ideas, right? It's not like they had no. bad ideas for the clips. I agree with you. So what this did yeah. was given me 11 ideas of, of clips oh, that you can this make. is just like stuff that moments. Because what's hard about making clips on this podcast is trying to like sift through the episode again. What's good. And, what, and then yeah. like, okay, what's going to be a good 30 to one minute clip that I could post on Instagram that could like get some like uh, people to, to like this, right? Are you ever like self-aware like when you're in like recording and you're like, What's gonna be a good clip? Like sometimes I'm just like, oh yeah. How do we do that right that. now? How can we make it so clickable? Uh, the surprising <laughs> truth about that? the pyramid you're actually, is you're let's doing fucking it right pretend now. to get on fire right now. Yeah. Can I like push the mic real fast? Go ahead. Do and what then, you want. Can, can I push the mic and walk over to you and pretend to punch you? Oh, and the and clip. Then that could be the clip. You want to? Can we try that? Let's try it. Oh wait, do we need like to build up? It's gonna be out of frame. I'm gonna say something right now. I'm gonna bleep it out in the clip. <laughs> so this and then Alejandro is also gonna be like Christian. I wouldn't say that. And then you're gonna be like, Fuck. oh, 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 we're you're staging do, you're doing the a setup. clip. I thought, the setup. okay, okay. I thought you were like telling us something, and I was like, oh, okay, where's this going? <laughs> okay, uh, on board. I mean, sure, yeah. So whatever. this is like an improv scene as well. Improv but they scene. don't know. But they don't know it. I'm just gonna clip this. So I, okay, I'm gonna try to really get in the element. Okay, okay. ready? <clears throat> you know what, Chris? I mean, like I've I've never said it to you before, but. Sometimes your pajamas smell like jalapenos, and I think that's really just clout chasing, bro. Are you being for real when I'm you being, say that? I'm being absolutely for real. Like dead ass, though. So. I didn't. Think is this like camera shit, or like is this real you life? Going to say anything? I, did I didn't I, think you were going to bring it up. Like, I, we, I thought we, I, this isn't an improv scene. This is real. No, no, no I'm. I'm I, this is absolutely real, this dude. Real. Like you your just asked me to be as real like with you as possible, and that's. I just. I. I have to. Oh, so Mr. Nice Guy is. Uh, uh, you're. You're real now. Is that um, what... Yeah, I I it's been a minute since I've seen you, and I feel like it would be actually dishonest of me to be to say anything else. <laughs> this is real, guys. This is this, real. This is ah! happening in the studio right now. Chris just knocked over our table. Oh, I'm going to find a way to clip all of that still. <laughs> no, I'm going to find a way. That's going to be the hardest Dude, editing so you've good. done. Oh, my God. I fucked it up, guys. No, 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 no. I got to get a new table anyway. Here we are being nice. <laughs> 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 We're just like, it's okay, dude. It's uh, okay. I, Did you learn your lesson? <laughs> I failed you. Ow, we might face her. <laughs> uh, anyway. Anyways, let me just this is why we don't fake stuff on the show, Chris. <laughs> Sorry. It comes off disingenuous. Yeah. Believe me, me and Christian have enough fights. We don't need a fake one. Yeah, well, we haven't had a real fight in a while. I mean, we've had, like, conversations anyway. Okay. I fucked it up. I, I'm sorry. You did not fuck anything up. That was just, we'll just really good we'll acting just where, you, <laughs> where you uh, pushed the mic. But you know what? It was good acting because it wasn't acting. Oh, you that last I mean? part? Yeah, that was real reacting. Real? That right. was true That's reacting. That's why I wasn't acting. I wasn't acting Honestly, reacting. I couldn't. It's so hard for me to look at you... 
fake be upset at me like hey bro is everything, this, everything is this was improv? great up until the jalapeno smelling pajamas because everything was very grounded <laughs> well, that, and that's real. what i was gonna bleep oh, oh. remember oh, i said wait. i was gonna bleep something okay at first i, was I like, thought you were talking about what we were just gone over yeah. that's what you were gonna bleep no I mean, no, no i thought no, i was no. like oh he's gonna put that in okay yeah and i was gonna bleep gonna that so that the audience God, this is the instagram clip uh, no, this is reality TV producer mindset. There you go. Ugh, God, which is the right? last thing I want to be. Where they're like, hey, uh, I heard Tiffany called you a bitch. And, and then, Tiffany actually loves this person. Yeah, and then it's like, Tiffany, did you call me a bitch? And Tiffany's like, no, I didn't call you a bitch. But then when we watch it on the show, it's like, Tiffany, you called me a bitch? It's like, fuck yeah, I did. And then they just start fighting. They just start fighting, and then that's more viewers. Honestly, it fucking works, and I hate to be a victim of um being a reality show viewer but melissa that's a way that melissa and i bond so uh it's real though like it definitely is one of those things where like you catch yourself watching and you're like oh who's that yeah what she said what what she oh uh, like what? sometimes when life's going too well you want to watch drama from afar yeah that doesn't affect you whatsoever so uh i mean i notice a lot when i when i watch karen's reality shows with her i can't i i get flustered with like how shitty the editing and the continuity is Mm. Because they're like mishmashing so much stuff together to try and make a coherent like conversation even. Right. Yeah. Um oh, God. that's the part where I'm just like, I can't I can't do this. Like I know that's not what they're saying. Yeah. Like you know that's not even their reaction. We know there's yeah. a big cut that happened in between uh uh something. Right? Like if somebody's telling like they're telling their story and then the other person's like, mm-hmm. And you're just like, I, like that's yeah. not even what they're wearing. Oh, yeah. yeah. You cut They've out. They've already taken off their jacket. Yep, exactly. They're either the half of the food off their plate is gone yeah. at this point. Well, so. on top of that, too, like People lighting. Like yeah. this is all stage lighting. They really set up lights to mm -hmm. have this like casual dinner. And so, like, like how authentic can you be with three cameramen in your house? following you with your new significant other let's say this is love is blind or uh -huh. some shit and they're just waiting for a fight to happen oh, man. and then they're just like hey act natural pretend like i'm not here but also you know Spices. give us some Spices. content baby yeah. it really is that halfway because yeah because it wasn't like part of it being like you know we want I, I i don't know i would assume part of it would be like we want the show to succeed right so we want them to fall in love mm -hmm. but that's not what they're just like you said, that's not what sells, right? So like they're like both cheering and like booing. Yeah. Yeah. Can you truly forget that the camera is right there with you? Like, I mean, even with this podcast and having done however many episodes we have, I don't ever truly forget that the camera's right there. We have cameras? <clears throat> oh, wow. I feel like I'm like like when I do your guys' podcast, like I'm like seventy five percent like chilling. Yeah. And then the twenty five percent I'm like, okay, there's a camera. Literally. Right, right there. there. Honestly, yeah, and we've gotten ridiculed from the placement of the guest <laughs> camera being right in front, but it looks so good. Well, and also, we're not right in front, though, so it's not like it's blocking. That's... We, it, we have trouble when we have four cameras. That's where lot. it really kind of gets into... Yeah. Because there's only so much space in here. I know. We need to... We need to... Please, baddies, give us money so that I could afford a contractor to break down this wall and we could have Ooh. a big I was thinking we knocked down that crazy. wall. Yeah. Knock down Build the wall out. that goes to the front yard? Build out that way. Let me just, uh, you know, uh, rent out some space in my neighbor's house. The drive, You have up until the driveway. You're so right. You're so right. That actually would be sick, though. If I knock down this yeah. wall right here and have a big-ass studio? Or just cut, like, a hole in here and have, like, a window so it's, like, a recording studio. You know what I mean? Where, like, this is, like, the <laughs> recording area. But this area, would still be booth. just as small. <laughs> yeah. And then we would have... But, the... all, but all of, like, a lot of the stuff would be in there. I guess... All the wires and stuff, I guess. That's not what's taking uh, up the space, though. No, wires are fine. Wires are fine. Uh, question for you. Do you think... Uh, Toy photography was a lot more fulfilling at the time because it removed the uncontrollable factor that is the human subject. Yeah. Damn. I feel like I haven't really dived into toy photography in a long time. Why is that? Like, yeah, you've teased us a little bit with some, like, here's a photo. Yeah, I don't... It just, here's another photo. It's just... Um, but that's also his thing. It's like, here's a photo. And here's another photo. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of doing... <laughs> Not a super tease, but that is kind of what he does. I do photography, so here's, here's a photo. photo. And here's another photo. I know, without me explaining no, the rest of the like sentence. Almost every day. Though. Yeah, that's what I was and saying. Behind, behind the scenes and, yeah. But just, now you're being a real Quentin about it. What does that mean? Quentin Tarantino Quentin, about I know, but it. what is that? What is Quentin? Oh, it's just kind of like, selective. here's one every now and then. And it's yeah. still so, so good. Just but. like, um, I have to feel it. And I don't know, I just... I think that 
period was an interesting period. Mm -hmm. Like very like I was very analytical, like numbers and da 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 da. And then I was just like, it's a game, and I'm. I only create now when it's like, oh, I want a new screensaver for my phone or like something. That is so you know. intrinsic of you. Yeah. Like, That's so cool. Um, but yeah. Or if I really like an action figure, like I haven't bought any action figures. I've been kind of saving some money. Because mm. um, the action well, figures are you're buying are expensive buy. ones though. You're yeah, buying the yeah. $15 And if you guys ever want, I'm trying to, I'm literally giving them away to like Stop. Friends. Shut the fuck up. Uh, really? Yeah, so if you, if there's something yes. you want, I got you guys. Uh, just so I don't put it to waste because I don't know if I would like I like the hobby but I think with AI now not to say it's going to deter me but a lot of what I've I understand the concept of get with the times in certain aspects but toy photography is toy photography mm -hmm. and I've been seeing people like do toy photography and then putting it, it in, putting it into something and it turns into like this fucking crazy image which is cool but, but it's, it's also like, just and I get it like I do photoshop and stuff but I'm like in there like You're i'm manually like, doing yeah so yeah ai is just like and it always comes down to it but i mean conversation i mean it's it's part of the world right now yeah everything it's it's uh there's an uh, ai tool that you could use with a uh, premiere where it just for podcasting where you put in the angles mm -hmm. and then uh you use that ai plugin and then it chops up all of the fucking angles yeah. and i'm like that's that's half my job. Right it's there. good. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, it's going to be convenient, but it. Uh, it's also going to be. I can see it just becoming. <laughs> yeah, not an issue because like, it is going to be a good tool to have mm -hmm. as far as like saving time. But yeah, I don't know. It's exciting, but it's also like holy shit. Melissa I, did try to use it to um, polish because you know how you could put in. Uh, let's say old photos and you want to re-enhance them mm -hmm. via AI. Mm -hmm. She did that and it just fucked everyone's face up. So like her uncle's face was like this, <laughs> her grandma's hands, like uh, <laughs> reaching for, for something were just the, added an extra finger or some shit. I was just like, Oh, as scary as that is, that brings me comfort because that means that we as humans are not made obsolete. Well, that's the thing. I think AI doesn't have that soul or heart aspect. So mm -hmm. like it can help you with editing, but then it's also like at the end of the day, a human needs to make the final touches. Yeah. AI is yeah. not going to create and AI is not going to finish. You yeah. can take AI as a finished product, but it's not. It'll always fail. It'll be comparison. missing components. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have soul, you know. And it's not creating anything. It has to use what it's seen and what it's known from the past. Yeah. It uh, is imitating life. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think it's a like like you said, I think it's going to be a really useful tool. Um I, I don't think it's as scary as people are saying. I think it's only scary because we don't know. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but I mean, I, I, like, I don't think it's going to be the end of art or nothing. No, yeah. no, definitely. We're still going to be needed for sure. Um, but I don't know. It's, uh, I'm I'm just I'm curious. I'm also like kind of excited to see. I was using um my friends. I don't have Snapchat downloaded anymore, but like I had a friend whose Snapchat was downloaded, and she said that, hey, yeah, you could talk to like an AI, uh, persona personality like on. Oh, you on can do that on ChatGPT. It's crazy, it, but like almost I mean, just like a back and forth conversation, not yeah. necessarily just asking questions. So I was doing, but the fact that it was on not necessarily something that is Chat GPT, it's but its something own thing. that is on Snapchat. Yeah. Snapchat that so many people. 10 years ago had and uh uh kids nowadays still have can just and i started talking to this thing i was just like hey what's up and uh, the chat or and the ai chat was like what are you doing and i said like oh i'm grabbing brunch with some coworkers, having some champagne and it was saying like "Ooh, that's fun it had personality i wonder if that's going to help with people with social like social skills so. like if it's going to help them like practice like how to interact with people um because like i said that could be a good tool but then it also could be like, yo, actually go outside and interact with. Stuff. Yes, I mean yeah. it's a sex robot. Why go outside if you have a sex robot inside? Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. And then, I guess it's you know their prerogative if that's what they want to do. Then, then I mean so there are it. some apps out there. I was watching this YouTube video about like some guy talking about how there's some people that fell in love with AI because there are some like AI dating apps where mm -hmm. you they it would ha there's like a, a an avatar there's like a CGI avatar oh. that you're talking to and you could get into fights with this thing and then there was a bug in this 
uh, AI <laughs> dating software uh, where it was getting a little too raunchy, oh, like nice. hella fucking raunchy. Uh, that's not a bug. That's a feature. <laughs> that's a feature that you have to pay nine ninety nine a day for. <laughs> I mean that 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 I really see as being true. I mean, part of like the big attraction with like um, OnlyFans and being able to talk to these you know, famous porn stars or whatever, it's like you can talk to them, right? You have you have this feeling of connection talking oh, to shit, them. Yeah. So that's going to replace all that. You're no longer going to need to worry about, you know, getting shot down or whatever because you could just plug into an AI. I want to talk to fucking Eleanor Rigby. Mm-hmm. And then it brings up this AI personality and you can talk to him as if it's your girl. You can get the girlfriend experience right there. That's what people are wanting is the yeah. girlfriend experience. It's kind of crazy because it's like at the root of it, it seems like everyone's just seeking connection yeah. whether it be and they're going further away from it yeah whoa Damn. yeah all they want is disconnect yeah. to reconnect because like how nowadays it's freaking tough to for some people to meet new people it's really hard yeah. like it, it, it's not just like the movies where you let's say you're a very anti-social introverted individual that doesn't know how to talk to people and the expectation is to go to a bar walk up to a girl buy her a drink and then just what fucker yeah and then hit it off from there Right, that's what they told us, but I don't know if that was ever truly in movies, a thing. Movies they say that, yeah, yeah. and that's ne- I've never done that. I've never gone up to a bar, or gone up to a girl at a bar. <laughs> gone up to a bar. <laughs> gone up to a yeah. bar and be like, ah, nah, not Hello. me, <laughs> not for me. Yeah, I haven't either. It's stressful. What it's stressful to just like meet meet strangers? No, not just like to walk up to a, a, a random person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, but it's trying to get when to you, know when them. you do that, it, it's fun, it's nerve wracking, and then you walk up to them and you start talking, and then you're like, "Oh fuck, I did it!" Yeah, ah, that's. Uh, well, I that, guess so. I think that's the theme of this year that I've been like, is like make yourself it, uncomfortable. Yeah, enjoying discomfort. Like, Whoa. like that's something that I really, especially I think what helps is when you slow, when you, you literally slow yourself because anxiety is about racing thoughts and like just like what if this happens or this happens, but once you just try to slow things down mm-hmm. and really just like it sounds wooey 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 woo-y, but like be present it kind of helps you communicate a little bit better and that's mm-hmm. something that i've been really interested in doing is um verbiage when you communicate with someone mm-hmm. like it's really interesting because i could if we were having an argument with each other and i was upset with you like i want to have a civil conversation so i don't want to say you know, you're not doing it enough. You're, you know, you're not doing this. You're not doing this. You you can switch, you can get the message across, but come out of place. Um, that's more, um, beneficial. Yeah. Beneficial. Exactly. Like, yeah. you know, the way I'm feeling right now, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, yeah. you're, 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 it's very, um, there's a way to go. I mean, I, that's part of growing up. Dude. Yeah. Imagine being younger and, acting solely off of your emotions that's what that's what children do that's yeah. literally what ch- children say i i can't have that then uh, then they freak out right there and then a kid does not process his or her emotions and walk into another room and be like actually mom the fact that you didn't give me roblox makes me feel this way yeah this is my counter argument as to why Roblox can make me a better person. Right? They Jeez. don't talk like that. Uh-huh. Do you have a child in this house? What? No, I have a lot of friends that uh, <laughs> that have kids that freak out about Roblox. Have you guys seen that video on Instagram? I have to send it to you. It's like this. I think it's a father and son, and they have like a podcast. They're on a podcast. Yes, together. it's a father and daughter, right? It's no, it's a, it's a it's a it's a boy. Oh, okay. and he's like the little boy's like you're my best friend. Um, he's like he's like God, I gotta find it. And How old is the son? He's like probably like seven. Okay. But the way he's communicating and ex- being able to express himself is very like old soul status. Just very like, yeah, I, I would have to send it to you guys. But My fear is having a kid that um, is not – I mean, no uh, – how do I? I've said it already. I can't backtrack. Uh, my fear is having a kid, and my fear is I know that I'm gonna. If I were to have a kid with Melissa, I, I'd be a an amazing father. I that's my gut feeling is that like my soul, my everything would go into that person. Priorities would shift, and that individual would go right to the top. My fear. I mean, I just would love to have a kid that could be able to be the kid that says, you know, why I should have Roblox, Dad. Because it can, it gives me uh, uh, social interactions. Uh, it teaches me. It teaches me that you know I would. But you don't get to. You don't get to choose. Yeah. 
I I feel <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've said too much, and no, I'm but, going to stop. Well, when right your there. future kid hears this and yeah. they hate Roblox, they're gonna know exactly why you they're hate like, them. What? That's, I do like the Buddhist uh, mindset of like, what's it called? The ch- uh, the children or child chooses the parents because the, it's their job mm-hmm. to teach you something rather than you teaching them. Yeah, I I could be could be wrong on what exa- how exactly it is said, but um, I think. What's the movie? It's called um, Soul, the the Disney Pixar film Soul with Jamie Foxx, where he plays like the jazz mm-hmm. pianist that dies and goes to the afterlife, and then like somehow gets sent back to Earth, right, as a soul. Mm-hmm. I think when souls are being made, they're looking at the Earth, and like the Earth is rotating, and they get to cho- uh, they don't get to choose, but they're kind of like given this uh, visualization of like these are going to be your parents, this is going to be your life, and then they get shot into the hospital room where they're birthed that'd be crazy isn't that nuts that to think be. about like that's nice right isn't it like so heartwarming to think and like obviously your memory's wiped of those moments but. well it's also like hey they need me right now so here i go mm-hmm. <laughs> Zim- oh these parents they really need someone to take care of they yeah. need they need a kid that's going to be into soccer just like his father and the, the right. little... what about the kids that like they Parents have babies to try and save the relationship, and it just like ruins the relationship. That well, did those did those <laughs> kids like read it wrong? Did they like see their parents and they're like, "This is definitely gonna work out." Their coke addiction is definitely very perfect for a kid, and then they show up, and then the life's horrible. That soul that jumped from the afterlife to the earth accidentally went to the wrong, the wrong set one. of parents. Like in the Grinch, when his basket got hit and knocked off course. Exactly. I got Jeez. you. Swapped. I get it. I get it. When I was a, <laughs> did you guys ever believe in the the stork theory that your kids or that your parents would tell you about no. kids getting born? No, no. I hardcore believe in that really yeah no i've never seen a stork so it's hard for me to believe that i used to wait outside so my front door and i'd look for storks i just want delivered. a bubble and you're waiting for a stork to fly you by. just want a what <laughs> a bubble a brother <laughs> that's you saying brother i don't know oh, you didn't understand yeah i didn't understand <laughs> a softball <laughs> isn't it the, the, those baby voices are the cutest so he, I, I, does it blow your mind? The is there like a? I know it's not overnight, but I like to think that it's overnight that a kid with a speech impediment loses his or her speech impediment. Oh man, not Mike Tyson. Why the? Oh, his he's still working on it. So he hasn't grown out of it yet. He's still growing. No, that's his punishment for biting an ear off. Is that he would just have to? I think his punishment was being disbarred from the boxing association. Ah, uh, that's also <laughs> true. But homeboy has a pop in podcast now yeah. and a very lucrative marijuana. I, I, I line. miss it how it used to be though with uh, what's his face, um, that football player that he had co-host with him. Mm. Mike Tyson had a football player co-host with him. Yeah, he did. Yeah, it was good. What happened? How come they split? I think it was like bit a, his ear off. It's probably a, <laughs> a business move. I think. Damn, dude. Yeah, so be careful, you two. He's gonna bite my ear off. Oh, yeah. Zane. Ooh, ooh, that's dirty. Don't, don't that's headbutt cra- me. That's ooh, crazy. I would never headbutt. I'm the least violent person ever. See, everyone always blames Tyson for biting uh, Evander's ear off, but Evander, Evander was head- something headbutting him yeah. throughout the whole match. Something led towards that. And Tyson tried to tell the ref, and the ref didn't do anything. Dude, I can't imagine just like being a fighter, being like getting throwing your life into boxing, p- potentially getting CTE, shaving years off of your lifespan or like i saw this clip of some dude getting like elbowed from an mma and you immediately just see the cut <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think i saw that yeah yeah, yeah. elbows are sharp yeah. they're <sighs> elbows are the sharpest part of your body <sighs> they are aren't they other than your teeth i mean but you're not bi- we're not biting people's ears off now teeth are pretty brittle uh, oh they'll come off they you? break teeth shatter all the time what are you talking about they're, i think they're really fucking strong we could i could get up i could get i could do some things I think there's three things in here if you tried to bite and break your teeth. <laughs> Easily, more than three. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but there's also more than three things I could bite here that won't break my teeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird how the world works, huh, buddy? If it wasn't photography, what do you think you'd be doing? Seeing what can break his teeth and what can't. Like the skills or what I want to do or like this, like... If what you wa- want to do. Because skill sets are... are I would want to be a singer. Like mm. I, I would, I want, I would want what you have, but I don't got Stop that. Stop it! I don't even have what I want to have. What is? What do you want to have? I want to have. So, I was just thinking about you last night. Um, <laughs> that's <laughs> at two in the morning. <laughs> um, in the shower. Uh, I was uh, thinking about you last night because I was on Instagram, and before I go to sleep, and you're you're scrolling. Uh, a lot of the I don't watch stupid videos. I watch a lot of singing videos, uh-huh. and I just uh, ran into this dude that does a lot of like R and B covers, uh-huh. and he makes them his own. And it so many of them say that like liked by Christopher Perry, I'm trying to think. liked by Christopher <laughs> Perry. 
Who is it? It's, his name is like Jesse Goldman uh, music, some shit like that. If I saw him. I'm going to play it a little bit. I'll have, probably have to bleep it. But he, it's watching videos like this. Uh, don't get Don't get me wrong. I feel fucking blessed to have the voice that I have been given and worked on. Uh, but there are some fucking artists out there that just make me really wish that I could do more with it. Let me see. Jesse, Jesse Gold Music. And so. When you believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. He, he plays a guitar too? Yeah. Superstition. You've seen this guy before. Yeah, this guy is. So I was uh, watching him on Instagram, and it's stuff like that where, like, even though I'm doing that thing, uh -huh. I wish I could do it like that. Do that thing. Yeah. He probably could if you just tried. I I try to do runs. I mean, you haven't heard me sing in a while, and I'm still just as shit. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You'll Let's, get there one day, buddy. Don't uh, worry. One day. Thank you. No, this you, is my vocal trainer right here. You fucking got it. No, but yeah. S singing would be the thing that you want to get into. Yeah, but I was going to go back to you. Like, I feel like you should just fucking sing again. Not even like do the, the high quality shit. Just sometimes just just, post it on your story. Just like you fucking. It's so tough to do the high quality stuff, man. Yeah. That's... I have the cameras running. I'm hot from the studio lights and I. Just sing. Let that shit out. You're right. You're right. I should. You too. You... Uh, no, 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 no. Yes. What if that'd be the craziest twist in life is that if all if I like just uh, walked in on Alejandro and he was just like humming a song and it was really good and he's like just purposely for my own sanity, sanity yeah. just hiding it. Just be like, I can never let Christian know that I'm better than him. Because <laughs> that's how I would sing too. It was all Mariah Carey. Perfect, Christina Aguilera. Your, your repertoire are power female singers from the early just, 2000s. You know what? I loved Burlesque, and that movie changed my life. It, <laughs> Genie in a Bottle is your anthem. I love that song, though. So good. Louder, louder. Louder. <laughs> Britney Spears or Christina? Let's just get that out of the way. Now or then? Christina. Then. Britney. Christina. Christina, I would say. Well, Christina Britney's now, Britney. Britney then. Britney Bro, then. Britney now is like, she's a mood sometimes. She's, she, she is. She brings out the confidence within me. Yeah, like after you've funny. been what you've been through yeah, she, and you acting like that, I should be, I should be doing better. Have you not seen the videos that like uh, all the clips that she's. Yeah. Put out on her Instagram for like the last six months. Yeah. I have yeah. all been shot on the same day. Because it's all so, in that like living room. It's right? all in the living room. She's wearing the same clothes. And like when she changes clothes, you can see the clothes in the background. And so it's like it's so a lot of people are like, it's weird that she would like stock up months of these supposedly like random Instagram clips. And they're all she's highly like, content, content. But they're content. all highly Dude. edited too. Like they're really? not like they're not edited like a TV show, but they are edited. Like there's cuts, like they're cutting stuff out. Somebody's looking at this. Her on Final Cut Pro just. I, it's, I don't think she's as free as we think that, as we think she is. I think she's doing what content creators do is like making a fuck ton of content and then just slowly Sli like stacking. But why yeah. would she? She wouldn't. She's pretty spirit. She doesn't need to do that. She wants. And, and to even do if it. she, it's her way of staying staying relevant. I, th I don't think that's what. She, but she's not doing it very well then. I don't know. I don't. And know. And you don't man. think she has the money to hire somebody to actually like do it well? I don't but think she, she is doing it well because we're talking about her right now. Yeah. Or this is why we're not talking about her music. She wants to do that's, everything that's on her own because her entire life has been managed by someone else to kind of filter the quality. And now this is if this is her and vision. This is her dude, filter. If this, this is, is her what vision, she wants to be out. This her, might be after what she's gone her through. Her half man. done makeup, weird dance moves where she's like looks kind of drunk. That's the choice that she wants out. I mean, could be coping, just coping, dude. I, I just, I think it's, I, I, for me, I see it. I, I, I'm seeing more red flags in these videos than I did before she was out of her conservative shit. Like I, I, I'm more worried for her now than I was before. Well, I mean, yeah. what do you think? I, it's just I weird. Don't, I don't have a stance. Just think it's too to weird. Uh, I think that this is just. Um, I if she's hitting higher numbers than us, then I can't say shit, bro. Of I course mean, she is. <laughs> of course she is. Yeah, she wouldn't even have to try. Christina Aguilera, though, I think uh, through and through in terms of like objective talent, yeah, homegirl could sing, especially like I think my jam lately is what a girl wants. Not that I'm a girl that knows what 
a girl wants. But uh, <laughs> you try to figure it out though. I try to figure out what women want. That one's a good one too. Uh, yeah. I want to thank you for giving me the time to breathe. Hit a run. When and you... then, yeah. See, you can. You no, just... I can't. I really, I cannot. I could. I, I have a set of. Someone that was trying to teach me runs told me that learning runs is just having. Uh, it's it's memorizing moves from a from a fighting game. Like you once once you have it in oh, your gotcha, like gotcha. you know that you could do this run, and you could implement it into different mm. parts of songs, and then you know that you have this run, and you could implement that. No one's making a run on the spot necessarily. It's a run that they they kind of know subconsciously, uh, like the same order of notes, and they just kind of plug it in type of thing. Hmm. Right. right. I guess that makes sense, right? I mean, because it's like a scale. You're not just hitting random notes on the way down. It has to. They have to kind of fit and correspond, right? Yeah. Otherwise, it would be. Weird. Out of tune. Oh. <laughs> Dude, like, what? the run, the notes in the run are so fast is that you can't hear the uh, differentiation yeah. between each note. So it's just <laughs> what you're not hearing. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's, it's <laughs> kind of crazy. But you can dance, though. Uh, here and there. And they're here and there? <laughs> yeah. Here really? And no. There. You do dance here and there, and it's really just, good. Thanks, man. I appreciate you. Wow. That's so sweet of you. How's everyone doing tonight? Alex, this is our time to just bombard him with compliments. Cause That's all you. You know that. I don't know. <laughs> You're almost there. You could dance a little bit better, a little more here, okay. a, little, a little less there, a little we'll more do. here. I'll compliment you, and then you'll just you'll bring him back down by insulting him. So, yeah. like, your physique, impeccable. Even you adjusting yourself in that chair, I saw so many veins. I'm just going to look at the camera the whole time. I, I think your pajamas smell like jalapeno. <laughs> Does that get censored or no? No, no, okay. we keep that in. You're so vascular. <laughs> okay, I'm that's kind of the same compliment as before, but <laughs> damn, yeah. that's crazy. You could do pull-ups where you do the thing and then you move left and right. You and could, back anyone down. could do that. I can't. No, no, anyone literally could. No, if they fucking just tried. That's different. That's different. Because <laughs> not everyone tries. You gotta make time. Damn. Make time for your creativity. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do an improv scene, y'all. Oh, what the fuck? Okay. Do you not want to do an improv scene? I can try. You can try. Yeah. You've oh. done it before. No, I thought you did one already. No, that okay. didn't count. When you dropped the table. Okay, let's fucking go. All right. All right, you know how it goes. Everything's yeah, off the top. No, no scripts, no nothing like that. And we just get into the fucking thing. Okay. All right. You want to say the words? Ladies and gentlemen, highly relevant. Mm. It can't be that oh, bad. Man. Try it again. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. it can't be that bad. Hey. Hey, guys. Uh, welcome to the annual meeting of the Christina Aguilera Fan Club uh, here at Benicia High School. My name is Christian uh, Baltazar, uh, but I'm going to eventually change it to Christian Aguilera. Uh, because I'm that big of a fan. I'm the president here. This is my uh, my vice president right here. Some like some people like to call him my my Dick Cheney of uh, Christina Aguilera fan club. Uh, this is Alejandra Aguilera. Thank you, thank you. Yes, Alejandra Aguilera is in its formal process right now. I just finished sending the paperwork into Social Security. So yeah, yeah, just a matter of days. And it looks like we have over here uh, the newest and the third member of. Look at that! Already doing the moves from Genie. It's Nabon. Britney, bitch. Fuck you! What? <laughs> Who sent in this infiltrator? No, it's Christopher Spears from the Britney Spears fan club. Get out of here with all of those dance moves from Hit Me Baby one more time. Never. How dare you enter P106, the main meeting place for the Christina Aguilera fan club. <laughs> Laugh, come here <laughs> laughing in our face. Alex, what do you have to say about this? I'm just, I'm just fucking livid. Cut to uh, 10 minutes before at the Britney Spears fan club where uh, uh, Chris and the other members of the Britney Spears fan club were conspiring against. Listen here. Yeah. <laughs> Are you listening? Listening. <laughs> we're listening. Are you listening? Listening. Megan. Yes? You stay. <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to go anywhere. You can't even fit that schoolgirl outfit anywhere. Carlos. Hi, that's me. <laughs> that's me. Carlos. Yes. You come with me. 
You want me to come with you to the Christina Aguilera fan club? Megan will stay. <laughs> Megan will stay. How come? Because Megan, Megan, you have to stay because you look horrible in that schoolgirl outfit. Megan, hit that move. Yeah, you're staying. You're staying. You're, you're Carl, not hitting it like Brittany, Carlos, bitch. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> you're it, it. It. Let's go scare these Christina Aguilera bitches and let them know that we're here to fucking stay. I'm going to go infiltrate. You're going to what? <laughs> I'm infiltrated. Infiltrate? Because <laughs> it's cray. So I'm going to infiltrate. Oh, I see. It's a pun. Yeah. Megan, you wouldn't get it. You stay. Yes. <laughs> Go to the Christina Aguilera <laughs> fan club. I infiltrate you bitches. Yeah. And I'm here now too. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm Chris. You're Carlos, aren't you? I'm Carlos. I mean, I've, we've never met. I'm Alejandro Aguilera. Fuck Are you so? I'll take it off your mask. You're just. Oh, oh, wait, that's, no, his, that's, that's, that's my that, skin. That's his, that's his skin. That's his skin. Chris, don't do that. That's his skin. Are you mistaking me for my twin sister, Megan? That's who you are. No wonder we don't like you. Megan, wow. it's your sister. Megan's your sister. She can't yes. even fit that schoolgirl outfit. She's my, well, because it's my schoolgirl outfit. Oh, you do Dude. have a <laughs> you do have a waist just like Brittany. See, but I'm a I'm on the Aguilera. Team. List five reasons as to why Aguilera is better than Britney Spears. In Spanish, oh, uh, num- numero uno. Oh, oh. Uh, I like Alex. <laughs> that butt. Mm. Numero dos. <laughs> That, that butt, but Now you're just saying things. You're just being perverted, not progressive. Number three, the um, notable charities that she donates to. That's, That's acceptable. acceptable. That's facts. Facts, <laughs> number facts four. no cap. cap. Number four, facts, no the cap. booty. What? what? Number four is the booty. That's still just the butt. And then number five is the booty. Wow. Uh, That's facts, no cap. Yeah, yeah you know <laughs> That's it. That's facts, know no it. cap. Yeah. Ching. So, I mean, we came here to infiltrate, but really, ching. Let me eat that. Eat that. that. Let me eat that. Let me eat eat that. that. (laughs) Please stop eating everything. (laughs) Let me eat that. Let me eat that. We Um, only brought enough snacks for us in the Aguilera. Oops, I did it again, right? Mm -hmm. Hit me, baby. Baby, one more time, right? Yeah, right. Um, Guys, just go back to your lucky. She's a star, but she cried, cried, cried with a lonely heart thinking. Christian, they're singing. You're going to need to out sing them. Christian, sing it. Sing them. I wanna thank you for giving me the time to be like a rock, baby. Don't Carlos, stop don't. Christian singing now. Don't start singing over him. Sorry, it just came over me that I like. I have a confession, guys. Are you Usher? I'm. Are you part what? of the Usher Club? These are my confessions. Then Come then to the <laughs> Usher Club uh, down the hall at P108. <clears throat> Watch this. Take it down. I really <laughs> want to take So, guys, I've That's been Chris having. Chris Brown. Um, oh, <laughs> fuck. You're, are you part of the Chris Brown club? Come down to down the hall to the Chris Brown uh, fan club. They're just all punching their girlfriends. <laughs> okay, fuck. Okay. And scene, 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 scene. I fucking hate it. <laughs> punching their girlfriends. Great joke. Oh my uh, God. That's a great joke. Can't say it everywhere, though. Uh, only here and there. Only here and there. That's it. Great job, guys. We Man, really know our was... early 2000s pop stars. Damn, I don't know how you guys do that. that do what? Be... Just improv? You guys do improv on, on a stage. Yeah, That's you crazy. forget about all of your insecurities in the immediate moment, but then when you say scene, it immediately f- rushes back. What did back. I do? Yeah. Why did I what embarrass have I done myself? up here? Like that. Where'd all this blood come from? You would ever want to, you don't, you don't want to like be an actor, like being the man behind the camera. You never want to be the man in front of the camera. I think there's sides of me that would want to do stuff in front. Like your I don't front know side? what. Your backside? I'm not going to answer that. He's never going to do it. He would never do it, dude. You, full frontal? No. <laughs> uh, I would love to do, I don't know. Something on camera is cool. Next to the camera? Like side by side. Something on camera that you're not filming. You want someone else to film it? Would that ever be I think game? it would have to be about like the craft. I don't think I can act, or maybe I could. I don't. Who the fuck knows? Mm-hmm. A- Asians are thriving now, so anything's yeah, possible. Man. I mean, anything's possible. Like you could easily go to the Philippines. Sick. Audition yeah, you just get for <laughs> you could just if you have the money for the round trip and the time for vacation. No, but you could easily go to the Philippines and audition for stuff, and they would love you because you have a certain look. Do I? I have to work a little harder. Do you? Yes. Says who? Are you Says, a casting agent in the Philippines? No, but I understand Filipinos and what they look for. What do they look for? Lighter skin, uh, s- smaller noses, 
and uh oh buddy that's not something you can work on i know there's nothing i can you kind of you kind of got those cards already dealt yeah out, no pal. i am definitely but i can join a singing competition and i could believe that i would make it like de- further there than i would make it here well on top of it i don't know yeah. i don't know i think you do okay in a singing competition here you think oh, so? I, yeah, why I don't know. Nerves are tough, man. Like, like I feel like I could sing decently in front of you guys, but then you put Simon Cowell in front of me. Why? You're a better berated. singer than him. But, but he you got wouldn't be nervous club. in front of like Manny Pacquiao? No. Because you know he would be one of the judges. You would make me feel very uh, comfortable, actually. Well, you just just like pretend this. that it's Manny Pacquiao then. Well, just close my instead of pre- closing my eyes and pretending that everyone's naked, yeah. just pretend everyone's Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. Damn. Honestly, would try it. Because I think, you know, you got the small town feel. You got, you got everyone in Benicia voting for you if you go on American Idol. That's true. So that's at least 9,000 votes, 10,000 votes. Oh, can you imagine the crew of American Idol going to Benicia and being like, here, in the town of... Well, now, nowadays, it doesn't even fucking matter. You go on there, they put your Instagram handle. As long as you get on there, and like you're pretty much set if you're a good singer. That... Because I saw it. Yeah, yeah, even if they don't pick you up, yeah, somebody will see you. Yeah. Somebody will want you. Yeah, you don't have to win. You just have to get far enough to... No, in fact, the winners don't ever... Su- yeah. The winners are the least famous of all the American Idol people. Yeah. It's always the second place people who do better. Yeah. That's actually true. But also, is singing competitions, is that the way to go now? I don't is know. it? I mean, yeah, it could like jumpstart a career, but... I mean, is your goal to have a show in Vegas? Then yes, it might still be a viable I'm reason. I'm super down to have like a Vegas show. Yeah, would lo- I mean, I don't need much to thrive as a creator. Like you said about being a photographer, all you need is to live comfortably, yeah. get a comfortable income from doing from doing that, right? right? And so I would, I've said it many times before, would love to just have a regular gig that could give me that regular paycheck. And if it paid me less than my current nine to five job, then I'd be, yeah, then I would fucking I, I think we're in a place now where we're finally going to see, I think we're going to see in the next few years, like the middle class celebrity. Because we have so many, so many niche markets, and with Instagram and Patreon and all this stuff, you know, people can, they don't have to be the, you know, millionaire in Hollywood to be famous and still have recognition. Mm-hmm. You can have a podcast with two hundred thousand listeners, who, you know, if half of them are given a dollar on Patreon, like that's, I mean, that's yeah. a solid, I mean, that's a solid living. Money, you know what I mean? Like that's money. that that's a real legitimate. Uh, thing where before it's like you're either a superstar or you're a nobody right now we're kind of like in a place where it's like no like you can be famous and like have a hundred thousand people know you yeah. and make money off of it and then go to like idaho and nobody even fucking has even heard of you or anything you know? yeah. how do you do it how do you like if you if it was like pushed into a corner uh and you had to become a tiktok star what's your content and let's let's put all your morals aside, even though uh, we're not. Get, we're, what's your example? Done. <laughs> you didn't have to eat a bunch of jalapeno uh, poppers. Uh, Fuck, as know. many I, jalapeno poppers in five seconds gonna beat the world record. I have no idea, man. Because you know me, I, I I can't I can't do like the stuff that is popular on TikTok. I don't I don't have a desire to even want to try doing those. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you would. I feel like if that's you, why I'm happy doing our thing, and our thing is kind of doing its own level of, you know what i mean its own level of its thing <laughs> yeah so it's like yeah i mean i'm not gonna i'm not i don't want to i'm not trying to learn how to like twerk or nothing i don't know i'm not gonna be the new like vegan cook on tiktok i'm not gonna like learn i'm not gonna go out to learn a new skill just so i can be viable yeah, on tiktok you know what i mean that's true yeah if i was like a gifted fisher then yeah my page would be on fishing i mean you wouldn't do like a, a bartending with your own twist type of thing uh like I, I magic mean, yeah, magic bartending. Oh shit, my bad. I guess. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Drop the table again. <laughs> I don't know. I guess a bartending show. I guess that would be of, of all the things I know. That would be one of the only things that I'd feel confident enough talking about. But even then, um, th- like in my head, I'd be like, "There's like people who know more or disagree or whatever." I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm happy with what we have. I love it. I love it. Content. Content over being content over oh, content. That's facts. Honestly. Wow, where did you use a, homo- a homophone like that? Thank you so much. Deeply appreciate it. Content over content. Love that. All right. Uh, Christopher Perry, we love you. We love you guys. Glad that you came back. Good to see you guys. Glad yeah. that you came and kicked it. Yeah. Got, uh, we, uh, we talked about a lot here. Yes, sir. I enjoyed I enjoyed this session very, very, very two much. Two-way street, three-way street. Yeah. Um, Four-way stop. Tell the listeners where they can find you. What pages to follow? Look up to the sky, figure that shit out, and Damn. just love yourself. Damn. Don't follow me, follow you. That's Damn. It. 
But follow our pages, though. Follow it. Uh, yeah, come on, it's bad. Can't what? That bad. Thank you, guys. For <laughs> follow everything. page. I mean, even though he didn't say any of his social medias, he's he does have social Christopher media. ChristopherPerry.ccf. Mm-hmm. And? That's it. The Creative Chip, if you want to see toys. What are, what's going on? You embarrassed of your toy photography <laughs> now? Roll the outro. No, you still got to say, look into no. the camera and say Can't one last that thing. Bad. That's the last no. thing. That's what you got to do. What, say what? Look, leave the audience with one last thing to say. Everyone needs an Otis in their life. And what I mean by that is when you are, you're scrolling through Instagram and you hit an Otis story and you see the journey you got to mm. keep on going with that journey. And everyone's journey is different. Christian has his. Alejandro has his. But at the end of the day, what would Otis say? All right, baddies. Until next time. Don't even want to say anything after that. <laughs> Remember, you are our first. It can't be that bad, though. It can't be that bad, though. It can't be that bad, though. That bad.